Amanda Hocking and I'm the Women's National Team Manager for Great Britain. So we found records that date back from the year 1900 of women playing baseball here in the UK. It was thriving in the 1920s, 30s and 40s with women's baseball leagues across the UK. Teams such as the Hull Nomads, the Rio Ritas and the West Ham Hammers. In 1982, the legendary Margaret Borley, MBE, formed and managed the Tombridge Bobcats. It still remains to this day a huge part of the British baseball community at age 90. Since the mid 80s, women have been playing co-ed with players such as Glenda Lawson, who played for the Croydon Pirates. And in 2014, Laura Harai became the first female player to represent Great Britain. Women's Baseball UK was formed in 2017. And last year, in 2020, I'm proud to say that the British Baseball Federation announced the women's national team that I've been dreaming of since I was a little kid. And not only did they announce the national team, they also brought back a women's baseball league after 80 years. After building the foundations of women's baseball here in the UK through my own organisation, WBUK, two years prior, we felt we gained enough interest, demand and respect to push for that women's national team. A WBUK board member, Amanda Taylor, uh, crossed paths with the then head coach of the men's senior team, Liam Carroll. And it was here where she introduced me to him to discuss the team further. Liam got hold of Andre Deschamps, uh, who's been a mentor ever since to me and a huge credit to Women's Baseball internationally. And we discussed for many months ways of making this happen. During this time, I approached the British Baseball Federation to see if they wanted to get involved in the WBUK Championship. And the very next day, Jerry Perez, the president, called me up and was very keen to get involved and help grow the women's game further. After weeks of meetings and looking into ways of helping the women's game develop, we decided to join forces and as a result we formed a women's national team and a women's baseball league. Old move considering we had no women's team here in the UK. However, I knew the interest was there and together we could see the great potential women's baseball had here in the UK. We've gone from around 25 players to nearly 200 players in three years, but we knew we needed to create more opportunities, secure funding for equipment to help develop the players further um, and not only did we look into equality, we looked into equity too. So the Federation reduced the fees for women's baseball teams to encourage clubs and players to form women's teams across the UK. And as a result, we've now got eight women's baseball teams ready for the next season. The last three years, we've helped celebrate Women in Baseball Week. This is an event that was created by the International Women's Baseball Centre and it's a great way of highlighting women's baseball here in the UK and across the world. Each year we've come up with a series of virtual baseball cards and it's a good way of interacting with the clubs across the UK and help promote women's baseball. We also run an annual championship during the Women's and Baseball Week. Now rather than having teams register, we ask the players to register individually and then we'll then put them into teams. This is a good way of building the women's baseball community by having players spend time and getting to know each other from other teams. I'm actually hoping to adapt a game to include the female British Blind Baseball players. This way we can help include them into the celebrations of Women in Baseball Week. So as you probably know or have experienced, we face barriers all the time. Now these could include practical, personal or social barriers. Practical could be money, a lack of funding to help cover the cost for new equipment. It could be facilities, not having female changing rooms or toilets or sanitary bins. Uh, travel is another issue uh, and it's probably our biggest issue here in the UK with teams being so far apart. Um, however, as the interest grows and the teams develop over time, it will be easier to regionalise. Back all these practical barriers, the British Baseball Federation secured enough funding to help provide equipment for women's baseball. This included catcher sets, batting helmets, balls, gloves and much more. And this is all going to be used for the new women's league and for the new women's national team. Dependent players out there that do not live by any women's teams, they've got the opportunity to join the WBK scratch team. This way they're not missing out on the league. We've also made games to be held on a Saturday so it doesn't interfere with the co-ed league. This way it gives more women opportunity to gain more game time. WBK come up with a seal of approval to help raise awareness for clubs who accommodate female players. Now it can be difficult and frustrating for female players to turn up at a venue where there are no designated female changing rooms or toilets and they've been known to wait a very long period of time for a group of males to change before and after a game. 
They've also been known to walk in on a group of males changing, which is unacceptable and changes need to be made to prevent this from happening again. Things we can do to help avoid these awkward situations. If you've only got one changing room on site, have a discussion with the whole team to see which is the quickest and most convenient way for everybody to change without feeling imposed on. This is in the interest of all genders. If you have very few female players, discuss if it'd be quicker to allow them to change first and vice versa. Creating gender specific signage on the facilities to respect privacy. And please make sure that sanitary bins are available at all times. Have a conversation with your female players to see if there's any adjustments that could be made to help their needs. And when applying for future grants to help improve your facilities, just consider that any improvements to help accommodate female players and disabled players. Personal barriers. Uh, this could be people who don't like the way they look or feel or simply lack confidence. Now, we don't like to talk about it. We don't talk about it enough and we need to, but it's body changes. Now, body changes such as the menopause, puberty and periods all impact women in sport. And evidence shows by women in sport that 42% of 12 to 14 year olds avoid sport altogether whilst on their period. This is why it's so important to include sanitary bins on site at all times to make people comfortable as much as possible. Now, a social barrier could be where all your friends uh, don't like sports and you don't know anyone on the team. So you're afraid of signing up. When you're recruiting through social media or through your website, include some female images on there so it looks more inclusive and more welcoming. Consider doing open dates just for women. This is a really good way of recruiting more women to the game. Approach local football teams, rugby teams and cricket teams and set up a charity game. More people are more likely to join a charity game than a regular game because it's more focused on having fun than being competitive. And the beauty of it over here is when the football season ends, the baseball season starts. So you could easily pick up a few players. Be aware that racism or homophobia can be subtle as well as open. Make sure to address the situation as soon as possible and set a good example within your club. This is for all the federations out there who currently do not have a women's baseball programme. If the opportunity is there to invest in women's baseball, grab it. And if it isn't, you need to create it because the interest is there, believe me. And as Jacinda Barclay used to say, there's never any failure, it's only feedback. So good luck.